Hey, it's Sean from the Commander's Brew. This time it's Lord Xander the Collector. What is he collecting? I don't know, but I think I've got a little bit of a different take for you. And as always, I'm not going to give you a deck. I'm going to teach you to deck. Lord Xander. Lord Xander is a hefty commander at seven mana value, but you get three pretty strong triggered abilities. The one when he enters, that's kind of scary. I think taking a couple of cards out of an opponent's hand is obviously bad for them, but there's some politics here because it only does one player. Attacking and milling someone for half their library could be a good thing. Someone might want you to do that to them. That is less of a concern, I think. I know there's ways to double that mill so that it becomes a true one hit mill the whole library kind of deal. But I think the scariest part is that third ability when Lord Zender dies, making an opponent sack half their non land permanents, round it down. If you have a sack outlet out, there's no way they're going to want to let you resolve Lord Zander. So it's less about a kill spell or an exile spell and more about countering Lord Zander. A lot of buzz about this commander. I've heard everything from one end of the spectrum, like, I hate this card, I'm never going to play against it. If someone brings it to the table, I'm going to flip it on them before we even start. And at the other end, I've heard, seven mana, no big deal. I'll never let you get to seven mana, and if you do, I'm going to make sure I counter them a couple times, and you'll never be able to cast your commander. Or just kill the player who's running Lord Xander, and then you don't have to deal with them. That will also solve the problem. So, I'm not going to build a deck where we just ramp out Lord Xander, protect him, and blink him a few times and just get way too much value. I think that's kind of the first level idea, and that's not what we're about here at Commander's Brew. I mean, by now you've probably already seen a dozen deck techs about that sort of thing. Got something different planned for you. Our plan A, actually, is not to cast Lord Xander. I mean, if our opponents are planning on making us the villain before the game even starts... Let's lean into it. Let's be the villain. You think I'm the bad guy? I'll show you who's the bad guy. But Sean, if we're not planning on playing our commander, why not just use a different Grixis commander that doesn't draw a lot of hate? Like Sulkanar the Swamp King. Because it's spoiler season. So before I get to our plan, suspense. Our opponents are probably incentivized to send a lot of stuff our way in the terms of creatures. So we need some goons to protect us. Death touchers. Foulmire Knight's a fine death toucher and has the added value of drawing us a card and losing us a life at some point later in the game. And Baleful Strix is one of the top death touchers there ever was. Two mana replaces itself, and it also flies to deal with those flying attackers. Even something like Ruthless Ripper can come down as a morph, and our opponents may not guess that this is a death toucher unless they've seen a bunch of other ones. There's a chance they attack into it, and it costs us no mana to flip this up. We just have to have a black card at hand. Thieves Guild Enforcer is another surprise death toucher, although we gotta do a little bit of work. Our opponents have to have a bit of a graveyard before this is death touch, but... 3-2 for 1 with Flash? That's a good deal. And although Baleful Strix is nice, I think Stinkweed Imp takes the cake for best Death Toucher ever. Unless you discount it because it's not technically Death Touch. Either way, every time it trades with a creature, we can get it back in our hand and mill ourselves for 5, which is only a good thing in this deck. We've also got stuff like Black Lance Paragon. It's a, another surprise. It comes down for 2 mana, gives itself Death Touch, probably eats something. And then we've got Gaunty Lord of Luxury. Being able to look at the top four cards of our opponent's library and put one in our exile hand, as I'm calling it, that's pretty good. And there it is. The actual plan. Using our opponent's stuff against them with our exile hand. Exiling things and casting it whenever we feel like it. Because if you're going to assume I'm the villain, that makes you the villain. And I will use your stuff against you since you are the villain, so it still works. It works in my mind. It, it does make sense. Thief of Sanity is a classic for this. Uh, we only get to choose out of three cards, but the rest go into the graveyard. Siphon Insight, after we cast it and also flash it back, ends up looking at four cards, but we get two to pick from it. It's about the same as Gaunti, but we don't get that Death Touch body behind. But again, I'm looking for more versions of this. I'm for sure going to run it. And I think Cunning Rhetoric might be the perfect card for this deck. If our opponents want to come at us, that's fine. But every time you do, I'm going to get one of your cards in my exile hand. 
Then there's cards like Covetous Urge that gives us a little bit of more choice in the matter. We get to pick something out of their hand or our opponent's graveyard if we see something in there that's really, really sweet. Dire Fleet Daredevil also gets something out of the graveyard if it's an instant or a sorcery. And then Mnemonic Betrayal is, this is the dream. I would love to resolve a Mnemonic Betrayal and have enough in an opponent's graveyard to enable their own combo and use it against them. It's possible. I can imagine enough rituals or maybe a bunch of artifact things that make artifacts cheaper and a bunch of little mana rocks in there. I mean, if they've got a storm deck and we've got a bunch of it in the graveyard, it's possible we can storm off using their own graveyard. Will be nice. Psychic Theft is the first of a couple of different ones. This was unfamiliar to me, but basically it's Dire Fleet Daredevil for their hand. You look at their hand and you pick an instant or sorcerer out of it. If you don't cast it, it goes back into their hand. Key difference here, though, is it doesn't say you may use mana of any color to cast it, which is similar to Praetor's Grasp. It's a tutor in someone else's library. But again, you have to pay the proper mana cost for it. So that's why we got to run a couple of things that let us make mana of any color. Felwar Stone is perfect for that. It literally makes mana that our opponents can cast. And if we're stealing from their deck, I'm sure they've got the mana to cast it. Right? Right? Why wouldn't they? A Trove of Temptation seems like an odd pick here, but hear me out. If our opponents are going to plan on attacking us every turn anyway, there isn't really a drawback to this, and getting an extra treasure every turn is a way we can cast extra stuff, no problem. And heck, Prosper Tomebound might be the best Death Toucher in the deck, but our whole hand is in exile. Our secret exile hand, that is. The stuff we've stolen from our opponents. So every time we're casting those things, we're getting treasures. Not to mention our own stuff going in exile as well. Love this card in the deck. So I talked about the deck having a bunch of stuff in the graveyard as well. And you'll notice a lot of creatures are the ones that are doing the exiling and the extra shenanigans. So we need ways to get them back. Stitch together. I hope we'll have the threshold cost most of the time. I mean, as soon as we get Stinkweed Imp out there, we're definitely having a full graveyard. So something like Stitch Together reads Black Black, put the creature back on the battlefield. And Crawl from the Cellar is an interesting include because it has flashback. When you're doing a lot of self-mill, there's a very good chance that these cards end up in the graveyard where they're useless. Well, this one isn't useless. We can use it from the graveyard to bring back something else in the graveyard and then keep it rolling. And of course, Unexpected Windfall is another way to put an additional card in the graveyard by discarding it. We could put in something that we want in the graveyard to reanimate later, uh, but we get to draw two cards and make two treasures. I love having those treasures. Frantic Search is another similar card where we get to draw, discard, and kind of sculpt what's in our graveyard. And similarly, Faithless Looting. Classics. For a reason. So that's the plan A. Plan A is use their stuff against them. So if they're holding up removal or counter spells intended for Lord Xander, we're going to make them use it on their own stuff anyway. I've been talking about having a plan A all this time. There is a world in which I'm planning on casting Lord Xander. And that depends what I get from the opponent's decks. If I get something like a Heroic Intervention or a Boros Charm, heck, even something like a Teferi's Protection, any way I can protect my permanents for relatively cheap, that's when I'm going to cast my Lord Xander, when I can protect him with their own stuff. Ooh, it's got a sting. If my opponents are holding up maybe a Wash Away for a single blue to get my commander specifically, and then I use their own Negate against them, ooh, that feels good, doesn't it? That's the world where we cast Lord Xander, I'm thinking. And if we don't end up getting to that point, that's okay too. We've got other shenanigans we can get to. Blight Herder is especially interesting here. We are doing a lot of work exiling our opponent's cards, so we've got those as options, but we might want to cast them. There are times, though, maybe your Siphon Insight hit a land and you didn't care, or a couple other cards I'm going to talk about later. Our opponents end up with a lot of cards in exile, so... Being able to get three little mana dorks out here, I know they're one time, but extra mana is always a good thing. Even Dream Devour is a really interesting way to put more cards into exile and be able to cast them cheaper. I know I won't get to cast them cheaper all told because the foretell cost is the same as the discount, but being able to do it all in a key turn is very important. I like Dream Devour a lot. I think it should be in more decks. And we've got pretty good protection with all those death touches, but I mean... The best way to get creatures to not attack you is to goad them all. Disrupt decorum, goading everybody we don't control, and similarly Carter Doom Scourge. 
works the same way, although it doesn't say goad on him. We get that extra bonus of opponents losing life and gaining a life when attacking creatures die. And the creature version is actually even better because I've already said we've got some reanimation in there, but also Chainer Nightmare Adept. Man, Chainer's good in this deck. I'd love to bring back a Thief of Sanity by discarding a land, and that Thief of Sanity will have haste so I can attack right away and get that card in my exile hand. Not to mention all the creatures I have from my opponents in exile. Those aren't coming from my hand. Those always have haste. It's a really good card. And since we got a yard that's getting pretty full, I want to run something like Mausoleum Secrets. I mean, if you can afford the big tutors, that's great, but this one's super cheap. It's only a buck fifteen and I think we'll have undergrowth of enough that matters. We really need three or four creatures in the graveyard to get anything we want, and I'm happy to get it. Dig through time. If you got a full graveyard, blue, blue, to pick the best two cards out of the seven cards on your library, that's a good deal. No wonder those things banned in Legacy. There's some really neat moves in the deck so far. I mean, we could stop here. We could just say, okay, this is good enough. The deck's good. Feels like we're the villain. I feel good about this. I'm going to add a bunch of removal, a bunch of card draw, a bunch of ramp, a few counter spells here or there, and that should do it, right? Call it a day? I mean, you could, or we could really lean into this villain thing. Like I said, if you're going to paint me into being a bad guy, I'm going to be a bad guy. Hostage taker, the, the, the name is hostage taker. This person takes hostages. That's a bad guy. Stolen strategy. I'm stealing your strategy. That was the plan from the beginning, but I'm going to do it again. And of note, these two cards put a card in exile. I mean, we got to use that card right away or else we risk them getting it back. But stolen strategy is a nice one to just get more cards in exile. It's getting pricey, though. This one's up to 12 bucks. I can see why. Heck, if we're taking other people's cards, how about Itali Primal Storm? Man, every time we attack, we get a bunch of cards from our opponents and ourselves. I mean, this is something I'd like to bring back with Chainer from the graveyard to give it haste for sure. And we could cast it the hard way, but I don't mind if Vitaly gets us into a Mind's Dilation. Ooh, Mind's Dilation. There's a salty card for you. And it, too, is getting pretty expensive. And again, it makes sense. The opponents can't stop casting spells and then probably giving us a bunch of free spells. I love this card. This is a real villain's deck. Gisa, Glorious Resurrector. Man, your opponents can't even have creatures die. They go to exile instead, and then we get them with Decayed. It's a bit of a roundabout thing here, though. Your opponents can get them back, because if they die now while they're Decayed, they will go back into their owner's graveyards. So it's like they just kind of stay away from the graveyard for a little while. Thieving Amalgam's another fun thing. It's a big cost but getting a manifested card each turn you'll know based on the decks you're facing whether or not you're likely to get a creature or not but either way that ability that when creatures you control but don't own die that's the whole deck and perhaps the most villainous card that there is is agent of treachery Oof, this card makes people mad steal something and then drawing three cards because we will have three permanents we don't own and control it's a creature, so it can be reanimated, bounced, whatever. Brutal. So there you have it. There's the deck. I mean, it's all talk right now because the cards aren't even out yet. We're still in preview season. Maybe Lord Xander comes out, people play with him a little bit and realize he's not so bad. I don't think we need to worry about this. And people don't make you arch enemy before you've even drawn your opening hand. And if that's the case, maybe you don't want to be this mean. Or maybe... This is the perfect deck to run with an obvious villain at the front. Maybe this is more your playstyle. Let your true colors out. Do you have what it takes to run a villain's deck like this? Even against Rin and Sari, Cats and Dogs tribal? And either way, I'll see you next time. Thanks for being you. World's a better place for it. See ya.